Hey everyone, Chomix here. Video games have come a long way over the years. It's truly incredible how we've gone from games like this to something as beautiful as this in just a handful of decades. And while I personally grew up with video games around the early transition to 3D graphics, some of my favorite games of all time are from the 2D era. Super Mario World, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, and of course the classic Sonic games. I won't lie, there's a little bit of visual difference in the games back then to what we have now. Just a little. Sprites, or pixel-based illustrations, were how video games were visually depicted back in the day. Heck, even today we see a lot of games use this visual style. There's just something about it that's really appealing healing even after all these years later. It could be nostalgia, but I think it's also the pure simplicity that gives it some of its charm. But back in the day, this lower resolution art was due to hardware limitations. While game devs nowadays have the luxury of choosing the resolution for their games, it wasn't exactly a choice back then. Consoles back then simply weren't powerful enough to output the high definition images we're so familiar with today. There were no 4K Ultra HD resolutions back then. You basically just had a small grid of blocks to work with and that's all you got. So, as you can imagine, sprite artists were extremely limited in the amount of details they could use to depict each of their characters. But despite this, they were still able to find ways to make their blocky characters exude a range of emotions, breathing incredible life into their game. Speaking of exuding a range of emotions, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button to keep my channel feeling happy. It only takes a few seconds of your time, but it really, really helps me out. You'd be doing me such a huge favor and I would forever be in your debt. Okay, anyways, technology would continue to progress, and the video game medium as a whole would eventually transition into 3D in the 90s. 3D graphics along with the stronger processing power of video game consoles made it much more feasible to add certain extra details, one of those being voice acting. I don't want to die! My god. And because of this inclusion of voice acting in games, it also created the need for facial animation to go with it. I mean, if you're gonna have a character deliver some voice acted lines, it'd be pretty cool to, you know, have their mouth move along with it too. Or you can be an absolute chat of a game like the original Metal Gear Solid for the PS1 and just have the heads twitch a bit when the characters talk. Do you think love can bloom, even on a battlefield? God, I love this game. In most cases, and especially today with the recent breakthroughs in technology, detailed facial animation is the norm. The technology has advanced so much since then. In the most extreme cases, animators are using cameras to map out and motion capture the actual faces of famous Hollywood actors, and the results are absolutely incredible. On the other side of the coin, you have facial animations done completely by hand, which can compete with full budget Pixar levels of quality. But before we got to this point, facial animation was pretty much all done by hand, although it wasn't exactly on the same level as the things we see today. It totally depends on the game, but the quality of these animations definitely varied. Some games painstakingly animated scene by scene, line by line. I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. And some games just didn't give a f about if their animation synced up with the audio or not. I'll be over as soon as I can. Now do me a favor. Just don't open the door till you know it's me. You'd usually find this type of animation in Japanese games, since the devs would sync up the mouth movements to the Japanese audio and just couldn't reanimate everything for other languages. And to be fair, I do not blame them. That stuff takes up a lot of time and money. Okay, so now the part you've all been waiting for. How does this relate to Sonic? Well, Sonic has been around long enough to kind of see it all. He's seen the days of 2D sprite-based games, made the jump into 3D, and has been going strong ever since. Yeah, strong isn't really the right word to use here, but you know what I mean. And with that, there have been a lot of varying ways Sonic's facial animations have been handled. With such a western and rubber hose inspired look, it's kind of a given that his expressions should be just as exaggerated, right? Well, this isn't always the case, as we'll get into shortly. I want to take a close look into Sonic's rich history with in-game facial animations and see how it's evolved, regressed, and just changed over the years. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So let's start all the way at the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, the Sonic series has its roots in the 2D era of video games. 
This means the game started out using sprite art. These games also tended to be, well, they didn't exactly have explicit stories with dialogue, so there wasn't really a need to animate the faces when it came to communication. But that doesn't mean that facial animation doesn't exist. You can see a lot of fun expressions with Sonic from his in-game sprite. It's pretty funny though because his standing and running animations have him with a pretty stone-cold expression. He's kind of just looking into the void. What, what are you staring at? Hey, Sonic. You good, buddy? You wanna talk about it? I've come to talk to with you about again. Anything, right? There's some great expressions here though, like Sonic's death pose, for example. He's got those big bug eyes with this look that just says, I f***ed up. The face he makes when drowning is pretty good too, despite being extremely morbid. Additionally, his face when teetering off a ledge is pretty amusing. I do think my favorite out of all these expressions is when Sonic is sliding down water. Apparently Sonic's pain brings me great joy. By far though, Sonic Mania is the most expressive out of all the classic games. Yeah, I'm including Mania with the original since it's in a pretty similar art style. It might be a bit unfair since it's running on current hardware, so it has capabilities for much smoother animation. Because yes, the animation is smooth as butter in this game, but the resolution of the character is pretty much exactly the same. The game basically just uses the Sonic 2 sprites as a template, but also adds so many more frames of animation to the existing animations on top of adding a ton of completely new ones to the mix. Like this one here at the beginning of Chemical Plant for example. Sonic is just so expressive in this game, and it really shows how far you can go even without having a huge canvas to work with. Sonic fully transitioned into 3D with Sonic Adventure, and with it we were introduced to voice acting. For better or for worse, voice acting has been a staple to the series starting from this game. And as many fans know, can be a very controversial topic. Luckily, we aren't here to talk about the voice acting itself, but the facial animations to go along with it. Sonic Adventure handles facial animation in a very unique way. The expressions are extremely exaggerated. Pausing at any moment during a cutscene almost always yields a hilarious result. Don't believe me? Try it out with this cutscene. Glad you finally made it! I thought you got lost or something! In terms of lip syncing though, it's a pretty big miss most of the time. Problem Knuckles, we'll take care of everything here! When comparing scenes with the original Japanese audio, they definitely match up a lot cleaner, but even then it could be a miss. The way that the mouth movements are animated seems to be a bit random. It's like they had a handful of slightly different animations for each emotion, and then shuffled through those depending on what emotion Sonic is expressing at the time. But the pure range of emotions in this game is just incredible. Here's an image that displays all of them side by side. Some of these are just priceless. There's also some really great moments where Sonic's spines stiffen up during tense moments. Something that should be used a lot more often, honestly. Although extremely janky, the facial animations in this game are pure gold and some of the most expressive even to this day. At the very least, we've gotten some iconic memes out of it. Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! Sonic Adventure 2 is kind of an upgrade and downgrade at the same time. In terms of realism, it's a big step up. But unfortunately, it's at the cost of the insane exaggeration that the first adventure game uses. Sonic still is really expressive in this game though. There's some really iconic poses and faces he'll make throughout the game that just shows off his supreme attitude. But I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't miss that insane exaggeration from SA1. I think the worst part is definitely the lip syncing. It's still pretty hit or miss, just like the first game. Sonic Heroes is in a pretty similar style, but this one actually gets the lip syncing pretty dang good. Especially in the CGI cutscenes, the lip flaps match pretty much perfectly. Everything else, like the facial expressions, are basically exactly like Adventure 2 though. Okay, next I want to talk about a game that absolutely nails it in terms of facial expressions. Believe it or not, Sonic Riders, a spin-off racing game of all things, has cutscenes utilizing, in my opinion, the full capacity of these characters' range of expressions. On top of this, the lip syncing is very, very well done throughout the entire game. I'd love for them to bring back this range of expressions for future games. I think looking at this game for inspiration wouldn't be the worst idea in the world, just saying. Sonic 06 is where the series gets a bit lazy with the expressions. As far as I could tell, this is the first game to heavily rely on eyelids to depict a lot of the expressions, and it's something I see a lot of people criticize on Twitter. While other games would use the actual brow to exaggerate various emotions, Sonic 06 kind of just drops the eyelid down. 
it's pretty lazy. Something that's also confusing is how the lip syncing was so great in Heroes and Sonic Riders, but noticeably weaker here. And by noticeably weaker, I mean it's even worse than the Dreamcast era of games. I heard that you tried to save their princess from Dr. Eggman! Like what the heck happened? Oh yeah, it's Sonic 06 we're talking about. That should tell you everything you need to know. Still love you, baby. Luckily for the next game, Sonic Unleashed, the facial animations are back to being really good. And I mean really good. I still think Sonic Riders wins at being the most expressive, but the quality of all the animations is really great in Unleashed. The expressions are a bit more grounded in reality, but there's still some really classic ones used throughout the entire game. The lips also match the audio again, which is definitely nice. I'd say the expressions are at their peak in the CGI cutscenes. Sonic looks so snarky in some of these shots. And then we have this iconic one, which is an expression that pretty much every Sonic YouTuber has used in a thumbnail at least once. Unfortunately, the series becomes kind of lazy again after Unleashed. Yeah, if you haven't noticed by now, this is kind of the thing with Sonic. You think they finally figure something out, only to regress later on. For the rest of the boost games, I'll be lumping them into the same category because they're in a pretty similar style. The whole eyelid thing I was talking about before? Yeah, it makes an unwelcomed comeback. Sonic also has this terrible case of side mouth which when used sparingly looks really nice, but if Sonic is facing a particular side of the camera, you gotta make sure the mouth is also on that same side. I'm looking at you specifically, Sonic Forces. I think out of all of the Sonic games, the expressions in these games are actually some of the weakest. There just aren't many memorable faces or expressions anywhere here. At the very least, the lip syncing is consistently good. This next one might seem like a hot take at first, but I promise you it isn't. It's a game that, while I hate to admit it, absolutely nails the facial expressions. Sonic Boom. Yes, you heard me right. I absolutely loathe this game, so it kind of pains me to say that the facial animation in this game is incredible. Just looking at the concept art, you can see that they really tried experimenting with extremely expressive faces here, and to that, I gotta give some big kudos. Although I hate pretty much everything else about this game, it would be criminal to disregard the great attention to detail that went into all of the animations, especially the facial expressions. Good job Sonic Boom, you finally got one. Alright, finally, I actually want to bring up the Sonic YouTube Shorts. These are 2D animated shorts uploaded to the official Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel. And because it's a cartoon, you better believe it's incredibly easy and natural looking to give these characters these huge over-the-top expressions. And yeah, they take full advantage of it. It has kind of gotten to the point though where a lot of these shorts throw in an insanely over-the-top meme-worthy expression, most likely to sell merch of it later on. A lot of people find it really annoying, and I can see where they're coming from, but I don't exactly feel too strongly towards it. It is what it is, and it shouldn't take away from some of the amazing expressions these shorts give our beloved characters. Hopefully by now, you're all able to get the big picture idea of how the series has utilized facial expressions throughout the years. With the advances in technology, it only makes sense that the series would evolve, right? But this is Sonic we're talking about, and as I've hopefully made it clear, it isn't the consistent uphill improvement you would think. Similar to the quality of gameplay, facial expressions have also had their ups and downs. Believe it or not, there are people that have really strong opinions about small things like this, myself included. I really do think that the series should take bigger advantage of the fact that our main characters are giant cartoon animals. And like cartoons, they should exude a vast range of emotions via animation. So hopefully I put this more obscure discussion point on your radar if it wasn't already. I think this is something we should want to continuously improve with each game, and paying attention to it will be the quickest way to show Sonic Team that it's something we care about. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly content similar to this. Doing these two things only takes a few seconds of your time and it helps me out so much. In the comments below, let me know which game has your favorite facial expressions. I personally gotta go with Sonic Adventure 1. I mean, come on, the thumbnail is inspired by the facial expressions from that game. And to take that discussion even further, make sure to join the community discord. I'll leave the link to that in the description. And finally, thank you so, so much to my backer. You all are the number one reason I'm able to keep doing this YouTube thing on a weekly basis. You can also back my channel and get some really cool perks for only $2. If you're interested in that, press the join button beneath this video or press the channel membership link in the description. So with all that out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.